my luggage. Uh, they never settled with me on that. And so I called them back and said, I just want to settle this thing, get it done. I, said, I need a one-way ticket. It's going to run me about $500. And they said, done. So United gave me the ticket, gave, I should say gave us the money for the ticket. So the church had nothing out of pocket for that. And there's a little bit left from the ticket I was able to get. I got a little bit better deal. But um, so that was a very positive in my mind. But this, um, the trip back, everything else we covered the trip there. But on the trip back, we were able to stop. We went from Monterey up to um, McAllen. And the Smiths happen to be at McAllen at language school right now. So we were able to go up, spend the afternoon and evening with the Smiths. There's his sister is with them. They're getting ready to leave this month to go back to um, uh, Columbia. So, but we were able to spend time with them. Hopefully that was an encouragement to them. It was an encouragement for me. And uh, okay, for you too, that's good. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a good time. And it gave us a good place to be able to stop, get three hours under our belt and rest. Um, from there, we went up to Dallas. And this was a little bit of a, a surprise for me. If you remember uh, 10 years ago when we thought we were leaving and then Pastor Tiffy had resigned and kind of changed things a little bit. So. But one of the places that had come up on my radar was a church in Dallas, Texas, called Rockwell Baptist Church. And it just so happens that's the church where a, a guy put me up. And it was with the, the assistant who was there then as well. He had uh, 13 kids. And so most of them were out of the home. So the home had plenty of room. And uh, But it was a blessing to be able to you know, make another friend. And just so you know, next week, um, we're going to have some things that are going to be out to give away, uh, some of which are these. We made these up, these yard signs, and so I only got five of these, but he also does calligraphy. I've got a number of those we'll be passing out next week. Just whoever wants can grab one, but uh, he, he, he gave these to us. There's some tracks that he, a track he has written. We're looking at ordering and it was a good visit, and it made for a good stop, and it was very restfully. They were very kind. Um, the rest of the trip, that last leg was brutal. So, <laughs> I'm just thankful God got us home. That was a, a very difficult trip, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Let's turn in our Bibles for just a moment to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's for time's sake, I'll go ahead and read these for us. 1 Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So he's making very clear Corinthians, you've got an issue. This is a bad thing that we're about to discuss. This is not positive. I have fed you with milk and not with meat for hitherto, for up till now. You were not able to bear it. Neither are you, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? So this, this division that's been going on among them is a very is a carnal wrong thing. For while one says, this is how it's evidenced, I am I'm a Paul, another I'm a Paulus. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who, who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Kind of like we looked at this morning with the, uh, you know, we are just messengers. We are to be giving out the word of God. Not it's, it's not about us. It's not about our opinions. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. We've got the same goal. We're doing the same work. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You're God's building. 
According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So God is doing a work, and Paul is making it very clear here. It's not important who's doing what part of the work. God uses each one of us as we minister in people's lives to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ that he's laid in people's lives. And each of us can have little parts in it. Each of us participates in building on that work that God has done. And I want us to think on that some as we go through these slides and we look at what has happened, uh, is happening down in Mexico. It's not so much, uh, you know, Howell is doing this wonderful work. You know what, Howell has his little part. Others there have their little part. Listen, you have your part in that ministry in Mexico. There is a very specific reason that I keep putting these faces in front of you as we, and, and, and I praise God for this technology. There is a reason I put their faces on these screens in front of you. I want us remembering to pray. And unless you are, you're, you may be a whole lot better at this than I, but if I don't see that face, I it's out of sight, out of mind, I forget them. And I, I don't remember to pray for them like I should. These FaceTimes, Help me tremendously. And all that to say, we have a part in the ministry that we're going to be seeing. And my goal tonight is not so there's a, there's pictures I've left out that you don't need to see. There, you know, me having Burr on my shoulders is not important to you. Okay. So there's things I've left out. But there are parts of it that I want to show you as much as I can to give you a burden for that, that land, for that field, okay? And at the end, we'll come back to a couple of more things. So let's go ahead and start these pictures. That's the first one, okay. Um, and Joanna, I might in a minute pass this back to you so you can have a laser and hit some things so you can point this and give answers on a couple of things because I'm not going to have them. Okay, we'll see how far I, my eyes can go with this one. This will be fun. Okay. So this is a view that happened outside of the apartment where they put me up. This is right at Ukla at the school. The school has purchased basically the, the blocks around it as they've grown over decades they just keep purchasing the properties that they can get now in our minds to go down say van buren and buy all the properties that would be very extravagant you'll see how that's not quite so extravagant as we go through these but it's still quite an undertaking uh this picture is outside the wall and you know, the kids from the school will hike this thing uh howell was sharing with me how 40 years ago, a, um, a trolley car was going up that, and there was an accident, and a lot of people died. And uh, so they have a, a platform or something. It may not be the right place, but they hike it. And it's a, it's, it's a huge, beautiful mountain. But the next picture zooms it out just a little bit. And I want you to see, okay, you've got all this beauty. Okay, this is what's in front of this beauty. Okay. This, this is what is in front of all this beauty. This is the common, th this one is uh, vacant by all stretches. But all the houses are this concrete cement wall construction, very small. You share a wall normally with, you share three walls with a neighbor. And pretty much, uh, I was sharing with someone down there, uh, if this was what was sold in America, it might go for five, ten thousand dollars. It's just it's it's not a um, it is not a wealthy community to say the least. 
And this is just one of the areas that's there near a wealthy community. Some of the things they've had trouble with, we'll see in a moment, is you, people can come across these roofs, hop over to, you, you can hop the roofs and go over and they have trouble with stealing and things like that. But it's just, it is a, the area they're ministering in is a, I'll say, um, very much a depressed area. One of the things that I think stood out more than anything as we were driving around was they love, they don't, potholes. Uh, there were some where you would see where people had taken a tire and dropped it into the pothole so people would notice and not run in. The potholes are huge and they're just, it's a very, it's a big problem. And there are some wealthy people there, but for the most part, most I would, I would classify as somewhat poor. Um, average salaries that I'm hearing was about $150 a week. Uh, keep them short, but keep going. Okay. So let's say 100 and 150. Needless to say, it is low. It is low. And we've got to be understanding that, that is the, this is what Powell, as he ministers in this church, is dealing with. That's what he, that's the people that he's working with. Powell was telling me that one of the things that's very real down there is the class. We, we hear about the class system in India. The class system is alive in Monterey. You, you definitely stay in your class. You don't get out of it down there. And it's, it's, or it's very difficult to get out. Normal rents, uh, I tried to convert from pesos, uh, one bedroom apartment, about 130 bucks a month is where I was staying. That's uh, And it's that's the kind of place you've got right over in here that you're looking at. And it, you can go up, obviously, two bedroom, three bedroom, but you're starting around, you know, a, one week, a quarter of your pay going towards the rent. Gas, if I remember right, like five bucks a gallon close to it. Um, so it is, it, it's just very expensive. Um, one of the problems with sharing these three walls is you also share, you have common, you, you get to share the mice, you get to share the cockroaches, you get to share the noise, you get to share all of that fun stuff. Um, I didn't like that. Okay, I did not like, I don't like roaches, they bug me. No pun intended. But they, I, I don't like the roaches. And they were extremely... Um, well to do. Uh, the ones that I went into, and I, I, I won't show, I didn't get pictures of those, but I went into what used to be someone's apartment at the church, and they were just all over the floor dead. And I, I don't get into that. Now, that's just not my, not my fun thing. I will share one story with you really quick, and then I'm going to go back to these pictures. And this is to make fun of me. Um, 20 pesos is about a buck. I'm, I'm rounding. 50 pesos, about four bucks. I got there on Wednesday night. I had a long day and I was tired. And I wasn't thinking clear. I didn't have my converter calculator out. And Howell came and he said, I need to get some things. There was nothing in the apartment I was staying in. He said, I need to get you some breakfast things and some snacks. He said, that'd be great. And I said, can I help you with it? I had changed in 40 American dollars. And I didn't notice how big some of the bills they gave me were. One was a 500 pesos and 200 pesos. Well, in my infinite wisdom, O.L. said, I said, can I help you with it? And he said, sure, that's fine. And so I, I, I pulled out my wallet and I handed him a 20. And I'm thinking, this is great. I gave the man a dollar. <laughs> And then I said, he kind of looked at it funny. So I pulled out a 50. I said, is, is this better? I'm, I'm not thinking. I gave the man less than five bucks to go get me probably $20 or more for groceries. And the next day I apologized to him. And he, he was laughing and he said, yeah, you probably want me to bring you the change, didn't you? <laughs> but it was great. Uh, he was so gracious. And so, you know, we as a church were able to leave him with $500. And I was so excited. I, I didn't want to, I didn't, I gave him an envelope and I left. I didn't even want to, I didn't have to see his face, but I was encouraged that we were able to leave 
a blessing with them. And, and we'll see some of the blessings they've had in just a minute. So let's go to this, the next picture. This one is no longer in the Ufla neighborhood. This is out in Joanna's neighborhood. That's Obed. Uh, you see these, these, these street dogs everywhere? And they don't belong to anyone, okay? They just go around and scavenge. And you, know, you can have those. But you're going to notice that this is this little house. And what they'll do is they'll block off part of their house. And here they're selling gorditas, which are really good. But this is how they make their livings. Another one up the street had a water machine because water is an issue. Down the street, and each one, they're selling something. You just got to know where to go. But this is, their, this is livelihood. And these things are probably, they'll sell them, but you're probably making a buck a piece. I'm, you know, it's, it's not a wealthy place. Go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, this is, okay, the sound is off. Car's up here where the water machine is. Back down here to where this one, then now we'll go down more. This is just, this is not the worst neighborhood, definitely not the best, but it's, uh, this just gives you an idea of what that area is like. I will say this, it, it really is a dirty city, in my opinion. Uh, up here, the idea more, if you see trash, you, know, you want to pick it up or have it picked up. Down there, if you see trash, you add to it, and it's just, it, get, it gets very dirty. Um, it's just a different mentality. What else have I got here? Yeah, so you got people trying to make a living however they can. Um, oh yeah, and there's also a lot of people who just walk these streets. And what they'll be doing is like the last day they were selling tamales, you just go out on the street and buy from them. They're pulling them out of a cooler and you just buy the tamales or you buy what the one guy was walking around before, I wasn't there, but you know, he sells a spray for bugs or whatever they can do to turn a buck. That's what the people are doing. It's a very, again, depressed area. And this is not a bad one. This is a step up. So now what we're going to do is go to Howell's Church's neighborhood. That's where I want us to concentrate. Did I skip one? I think you did. There. This is the church. This is the area and the church where Howell is ministering. Now, I just want to show you a couple of things. First of all, you this van, by the way, a, someone who lives in North Carolina at a church that supports them was upgrading, and they wanted to donate this. So they donated him this, this van. They had to donate as well the fee to get it into the country, which is very high. It has, it's, it's got a few less miles an hour, so like 190 or something like that. But it's running good. They're very thankful for it. Someone just gave it to them. So they were praising the Lord for that. But I want you to notice the back of this van is even with the end of this building. Um, so you see how wide these buildings are. I, I use that just for a reference sake. So these are fairly narrow. Now, this building is where they started. There is a lady, uh, believe her, it's Elvia, is the one who owned this home and would allow the, the church to come in and do Bible studies. That's how they started. They would meet inside here, and her kitchen was, there, there was a wall inside. Her kitchen was behind it. She would run the, have the Bible studies going, and she would be cooking, and then they would take shifts, and everybody would come through that kitchen, and she would feed everybody, and it was good. Uh, we, I was there, when we were there seven years ago, she was doing this in this building, and getting this place started. Well, then they got a home somewhere else, and her and her husband donated this property to the church. Now, one of the problems they had is, I mentioned it before, the break-ins. Um, people will go across these roofs and get in. Now, you'll notice that after they had a couple of break-ins, some of the men built this wall up on top, and if you look, you can see them there are little jagged pieces all across this. They're on the, the schoolyard across the street. They ran this razor wire all the way around the building so people just can't get in. And they wanted their AV equipment, and so they would steal it. And most of it, from what Howell said, was teenagers 
wanting to get in and make a quick buck. So they, this is where they started. Uh, they would run the youth group up here. And the, oh, by the way, the way these things start, people would get the land and they, don't, they didn't really think ahead. They would build a room and that's where they would live. And then, then they would have a child. So they would build another room and just, they would start building on and there's no rhyme or reason. So as he contacted us a while back and said, they're trying to, this is the second building, as they're trying to make these two into one, it's a nightmare. And they're trying to figure out how to keep the buildings up and bust out some walls and, and make things happen the way they want it. So that's what they're running into. So this is where they started. And then this one came up for sale and they were able to get it. That's their church sign, by the way. Uh, they, did, they hang it off of the fencing. But this is where the church meets. It was humorous a little bit. This door, I don't know if you can tell, when I went through, I had to duck. It's a very low door. And when they bought it, there was a wall that was about this tall across the doorway at the bottom. So you had to step over the doorway and duck at the same time. And they didn't understand that. So they busted that out. They thought maybe for varmints or something. Well, then they had a ring. <laughs> And they found out why that wall was there. <laughs> the whole place flooded. And uh, so they, they did something else. But um, that's where they are. Right now, this is where they have their services. You'll see inside in a few minutes. Uh, that's where they have their prayer meeting, the Sunday service. And I will say this. At the Sunday service, I, was, I, I mentioned this morning, those people sing out. And I appreciate it. it was, uh, I couldn't hear myself well. And I like that. I like to be able to hear a group of people who are singing out. It was a really good thing. Um, let me see. Yeah, youth. Okay, so in these apart in these places now, they meet here for their main service. Youth meet over here. They have like classrooms, which were bedrooms, up on these areas on this landing. It's open, so they'll have some of the young people meet up there where it's cooler. In the back of this one. Elvia and her family had built like an apartment where one of the daughters lived as they got older. That was, that's where the roaches were. But until recently, that's where the assistant pastor, a guy who came to help him was living. So they have someone who's, um, he has an outside job and he's just helping with the church, which has been a big blessing for them. Um, okay, the next one that you're going to see is going to be a video and I'm going to have you stop it as soon as you start Okay. Okay. This wall, and you can't see it good. It's got that jagged stuff, all the sharp things, so you can't break in. This is uh, the elementary school. Um, I told Howell I have never seen a school like that in the states that wasn't getting torn down. It was it was bad, but that's that's their in this area. It's their norm. And that's what the kids are used to with growing up. Now, you'll notice going down this street, and I wish with these you could zoom it, but we can't. But it is a very rough area. I was, if you see these pipes coming out, mm -hmm. that's where all the rainwater just shoots out into the street off the roofs. I thought that was kind of, I would not want to walk down the street in a rainstorm, but that's, that's what happens. I believe that. <laughs> so this is the neighborhood, and it's um, it, it it really is it's a rough area. This this one that he's in. So go ahead and go through that video. You'll see a. a... Now that is a big deal there. Coca-Cola, you get it, I think it's three liter bottles. They drink it like we drink water. It's, it's just, that is one of their main staples here. They're digging up the road. They just leave holes that are like this. It's just, it's, it's just a mess. And the, I would say the family situations in this neighborhood are not positive. Uh, a lot of single parent homes uh, and it just, 
it, it perpetrates itself. And it's a very sad thing. But this is what the area that Hoelden is in is like. Um, it's just a, a very, it's, it's a really rough area. So be praying for them. It's a hard area that he's ministering in. They do have people who come from outside of, the, let's say, this class of area, people who are coming in and ministering. Howell said that some of the people around the area consider it like an affluent church because people come in from affluent area. People drive in, there's cars. And so they consider them more of an affluent church because people drive in. Uh, probably the vast majority of the people who live there use the public transportation, um, but it's uh, it, it's a hard area. Before we go further, feel free to throw your hands up if you have a question, uh, and I'll try to answer it. If I can't, I'll defer, but uh, feel free to stop. That was a school right on the other side, right? Oh, yeah, right there. across the street from the church is the school. Um, how much uh, detail do you want? Uh, <laughs> uh, they tell you do not, um, when you go to the restroom, you're not supposed to flush paper at all. System can't handle it, they say. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not up to our standards. So if that would give you an idea. So let's uh, go to the next one. Not there. Yes. Sounds like you're saying that the uh, ministry is either selling stuff. Is there any type of industry there? Big time. The industry there, that is the most Americanized city. Uh, it's where, when America says they're sending something to Mexico for production, there's a good, not, it's not the only place, a good possibility is going there. Hmm. There are no stocks. You do come by or? Depends on uh, your skill level, your uh, education level, skill level. If, if you're willing to actually, uh, if you're willing to show up to the job, because there's a lot of people who, just like here, what happened after the pandemic, where people try to get really lazy about showing up, they pick up and down there. And um, but the American jobs are considered some of the best jobs, the most desired ones, even though, you know, America, the businesses in America send them down to that, so they can pay them to go low. But their low, our low is not bad, so to speak. Yeah. Average to So that's, um, hopefully that answers that. Uh, you do have, your if you have a degree like engineering, you can do better. If you're going in like on the flat factory floor, you'll, that's where it starts. So that gives you an idea. But still you're starting, your probably 100, 150, you work up to the 150. So you start low and go up. So it's a hard area, it's a hard area. Does that answer the question? Okay, okay. Um, this picture is of their, they have their midweek service on Thursday, and I appreciated what Howell is doing. He's very concerned that the people understand the word, and, and we've tried this before, uh, had, you know, some liked it, some didn't, but uh, what he does on their midweek service is he splits up, this is inside the new building to the right. So what he does is he puts a table here, and we'll see the next table in a minute, but he'll have that group discussing and going over the Sunday service, making additional application, things that the questions they had had, and they make sure that it's understood, and uh, what's the word, extended, um, he explains more and gets more application, and that's his goal. They start with prayer, and then they go into the passage that was read, and just so you know, uh, that's Sophie back here in the back. That's their adopted, the, uh, they call him the adopted son, but um, Alexis. Um, and that guy right there, we'll talk about in just a minute. 
Um, but this is one table. Go ahead and go to the next. Uh, <laughs> this is the one I was at. This is Elvia, the one who donated the first property. She's been a staple member of that church, very faithful. When I was there, her daughter, Floor, was uh, was there. I, this is another daughter, and I don't remember her when I was from when I was there before. Uh, Floor has married since, uh, married a pastor in another area, and is with them. So they have these two areas that they meet in, uh, pray together, and go over the passage. So that was a typical um, Thursday night. And I, I do, I think that Howell is doing a good job with getting good participation by keeping these groups small. And it's, um, and I appreciated that he's willing to let somebody else just turn them loose. And he didn't have to be in control of everything. He's trying to get people involved and excited about what's going on. So that was, I think it was, it's helping their growth, their spiritual growth. So he's doing a good job with that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, they, they have a thing in Mexico, I think. We may have it here. We just don't do anything about it called National Children's Day or something like that. It's a big deal here. And they take a day off. But they, anyways, they have the church that Joanna is in was having this big kids day. And I went with them to it. Obviously, they had the bouncy thing up here that they're taking back. This little car. You can see, I mean, okay, this thing is like double the my width. It's a small car. There were that one, that one, that one, that one across the back seat. And you'll see what's in the front in just a minute. Okay, it was there were kids everywhere. Um when we went into this area, into this church, I walked in with, with Burr, with Joanna, Burr. It, I'm limited exceptionally on the language. That's a that's a problem. That, for me, that was a problem. And I but I, I didn't want to just sit around and watch people doing stuff. I wanted to help in some way. So I ended up going back to a back area and they were putting food together. I asked if I could help. And I was trying to do they told me I could pass things out to the kids as they came to get a, a hot dog and uh their hot dogs are good, by the way. Um, they put mayonnaise, must the one we went to a stand, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, tomatoes, onions, pickles, sauce, anything you want. They had everything on it, but it was good. So there, we American. It was it was like going to an American restaurant and instead of a Mexican restaurant. Anyways, they asked me to start passing stuff out to kids. There's nothing I can do, but I can hand them out and I can have fun with the kids. So you do the things where you hand it to them and you just don't let it go. The kids look up like, you know, what are you doing? And you pull it back. You just you tease with them. They had fun. And as a result of playing with the children, um, some of the kids wanted their picture. And it was in my office. I should have brought them back here. They made these little crafts. Two of the little girls are signing the back of them and giving them to me. They want me to eat their crafts. It was sweet. And this one's name was Edis. Edis. Okay. On her way leaving, one of these windows was down, and she's poking her head out saying, I love you. And it was sweet. So I really enjoyed this. Um, I don't believe this one, or th these are sisters. I don't believe they're saved, but one of the fan couples you're going to see does a Bible study in their neighborhood, and they reach out to these girls. And I'm encouraged if, uh, yes. I'm encouraged by the fact, as we read in that passage earlier, God is the one who does the work. Just encouraging and loving kids. You know, I may have absolutely no influence or impact on them coming to Christ, but if, if, if I can give some kind of a, a push and keep them involved with this family, maybe it'll help. And I don't know how God's going to work with that limited little bit of English or Spanish that I had, but I trust that God can use it. And I say that for our benefit. God can use the little things. And we need to be faithful with what we can be with the little things. Um, so we're in the back of this car. I'm sitting there obviously on the edge. The kids, you can see their faces turned around up here. So 
as we took a couple of pictures, the next picture happens. All the kids want their pictures. So they come around it. This is the group that's inside this little car. It was packed. But this couple was bringing them, bringing all the kids they could get to have them exposed to the gospel. And I appreciated their faithfulness. The couple's next, I think. Yeah, that's the couple. She spoke pretty good English. This guy was a testimony in himself. He showed me pictures that he came across. He found later from when he was in a gang and he had pictures of himself with his gang members. And it was rough. He got out of it. I don't remember his testimony. Um, he got out of the gang in his, I think, late 20s. I don't know if he was converted first, converted after, but he came to Christ. The Lord turned him around and he keeps those pictures on his phone to show people this is where I was and this is what Jesus did. And it's not a glory in the gang culture. It's a glory in the change and what Jesus did in his life. And I was exceptionally encouraged by this couple. Now, both of them have their tourist visas and they believe that they have a strong desire. A lot of people down there have this strong desire to come see the ark. And so this couple has an invitation for me already to come stay in our church and use us as a base to go visit the ark, the creation museum, and to go visit things. Would love to have these people come. Up. So they have, they were, they're excited about coming at some point. Don't know how that's going to happen or when it's going to happen. But uh, it was exciting to see their desire to want to serve the Lord. And they're a very faithful couple in that church. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, you saw this one. Uh, go ahead and go to this and the next. There's the Zoom. Uh, all of you are here this morning, right? Okay. So, again, impressed by the fact that this guy is wanting to be in the Word of God, that he's excited about reading his Bible. This is not something he did because he had to go to church. This is his life. It should be our lives. Okay, let's go. We've already seen that one. You remember this? Anybody not remember ever? Ever was here? Oh, my. How long ago? Oof. Oh, wow. Thank you, David. <laughs> 2017, Ever came up here. He sang with us. He ministered in the church. I did not know this uh, until this trip. His, his goal was looking at, could I come and minister in this place? And that's still, a, that's still an opening. He's still considering this. I'm, I'm open. Uh, he is, since he was here, he married Jasmine. They've had, I forgot her name. Good, you did too. Okay. <laughs> so he came, he has a church he's involved with. And when he found out I was here, he came and visited while I preached Sunday. And I don't know if I told you I was preaching. That was hard. Uh, to preach with an, an interpreter was very difficult, especially when Howell was my interpreter and he struggled with the language. So his English is not exceptionally clear. So it was a difficulty. This is inside their building. Um, you remember where you saw those two tables? We had the table of tables for people during the Thursday night studies. One table was right here. They tear them down and they put up these chairs. One table was over here and they tear those down and put up chairs sideways facing this direction. So that's how the church works. Probably holds about 60 is my guess. But that was, uh, that's where we were. So ever, it was just a joy to see him again. And uh, if you don't remember him from before, excellent. He's a, a music major from UCLA and does an excellent job. English is excellent there. So he is planning another one. He's planning. Uh, he has his visa. Jasmine has hers. They're trying to get hers. And they would like to come up in December for a visit. So we may have them again. Um, that would be an excellent visit for us. So I thought you'd want to see that picture. Let's go to the next one. This one, this guy is, um, I may have to get help with this, uh, Jair. Yes? Okay. Jair is one that I met the last time I was down there. Jair looks, I mean, from here up, he's a muscle. And it's just, he's massive and very thick. But I told him the last time he was here, he, we would walk places together. 
And I, I finally got it through to him. He's my bodyguard. And he would walk up. And that's when I saw him this time, I, I, that's, that's what came up, my bodyguard. And uh, so it was a good reunion. And this was encouraging to me. And that's why I wanted to share this. Um, Jair's family is, it's, it would be, in our minds, a rough family. Uh, they are, they are, I call them my bodyguard. They would, some of his family would be like enforcers, if you know what I'm saying. They're, they're a rough family. And Jair was saved when he got to Ufla. Why he came there, I'm not sure, but he came to the school. He was converted. He stayed there for a year or so, and then he left. And he started getting back with some of the old crowd. He started getting in with, you know, evil, evil companionships, corrupt good morals. And he got back with his evil companionships and he wasn't staying close to the Lord. That's what happened. Well, about a year ago, I don't know what his wake up call was, but he shows up with Oel and he has been faithful. He's, he's had his bumps, but he's been faithful at coming ever since. And he's even moved into that area, which is a lower area just so he can help be an outreach for the ministry so Shair, i was very encouraged and one of the things i'm you know i'm hoping that just to be able to uh, encourage him to keep walking with the lord i'm hoping god will use that uh, so it was it was just an encouragement to get back together with him um trying to see if i have anything else here yeah he's remained faithful so that was, I would say, if I had a ministry with him, it was just to encourage him. He walked him with the Lord. Then we go to Howell's house. Now, let me just give you a quick, um, if, you, if you notice this house, it's different. You notice there's like plastered walls. They're nice. Every tile floors. This house was beautiful. It was a gorgeous house. And here's what was exciting. Howell was laughing with me and he said, I hope you won't kick me out from your church because I had a sign. I went, really? So he was telling me what happened. They needed to be out of their house, their rental. And the Lord worked this out for them where his parents were very excited. His parents were wise with their money. They, they made little, they worked in the companies they could, but they saved, they invested in homes. And they had this one home that Kristen and Hoel, they didn't like it. It was kind of a rundown. You can live in it. They did live in it for a while. But it wasn't a nice place. And it's not like with a concrete structure you can add on. You got three walls surrounding you. There's not but so much you can do. You, know, you got to go up. Well, they didn't want the house. And so what Hoel asked of his father was, I realize this is my inheritance. Could you sell it and buy something and, and let us buy something closer to Ukla, closer to where we're ministering so that we can have something here? That house sold and the way it was, it was, in their words, kind of a dump, but it was in the middle of a very nice neighborhood. It was the low end of a high end neighborhood. It sold fast and it sold top dollar. So top dollar down there, not top dollar up here. So they were able to sell their house and just get a small loan from a fam her family and get this house free. And now they paid it off, which is a blessing. Kristen's words came out of her mouth. This is my dream home. Now, keep in mind, you're sharing three walls. But across the street from them is a little park. They're in an area where there's only, I think, two entrances into their area. It's got its issues, like everywhere else. But this was a home that they prayed for. The sign. Uh, Powell was looking for a place to live. He goes, he's talking for a rental. He's talking to somebody in this neighborhood. And he looks next door and he said, well, what about that house? It looks vacant. She said, it's been vacant for years. The person that owned it, his, what he does is comes in, fixes them up, and flips them. That's, what he, that's part of what he does for a living. He could come in, and for some reason, there was some water damage in it, and he, couldn't, he didn't flip it for whatever reason. Probably the Lord was saving it for Hoel and Kristen. But 
Powell walked over, and here's where he saw his sign. He walks over in front of the house, and he looks down on the ground, and a for sale sign had fallen off, and the for sale sign was down on the ground. He reached down, picked it up, and said, Kristen, we got to call this now. The sign was down. He called it, and the guy wanted to sell bad. And so they got a good deal. I would say probably American money, if I remember right, around $60,000. And uh, down there, that's an expensive home. Those other ones are probably running, if I ran the numbers right, around 20 for just you know a two-bedroom house in a neighborhood. Uh, some of them are probably lower because they're they're nasty. But this one was sixty. They got a done deal house, three bedrooms, three bed. And because they redid it and they put in their kitchen area, she has something that most down there don't have, which is a dishwasher, and she's thrilled. So they were able to get so much into this house. And, and I appreciate, I'm glad for them. I'm happy for them. And what they do is every Sunday and during the week, they try, they're very burdened about having people over and having fellowship times. So this was Sunday. Uh, this is Jair. Uh, this one is one that played, uh, his name was Yuri, um, Spanish background and speaks French. He just speaks everything. He's just a, he's a really great guy. Uh, they play clarinet. Him and Joanna play clarinet in an orchestra thing together. And he's just a, he was a good one. This guy was Mexico City. This is his sister. Okay, these are the kids, if you remember. Uh, Sophie, the oldest. Elliot. Wesley, who we've never, you've never met. And now there's William. And he's not in there. Kristen was sick during this time. But this meal was fun. Um, and it, it's, it's, it was simple. Those little, these little plates, little things, they just put a little block of shredded meat and then you start pulling a tostita, tortilla, and then you've got the onions and cilantro and cheese. And I never noticed the salad till after, but there was just, it was just really, it was good. And sauces were there. I think this one was from Ecuador. She would be right across the border are close to where Matt Smith is ministering. So I was trying to get that connection going. Um, it was just, I, let's see, him, 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 and me. We're just sitting in this room trying, we're going, just talking Spanish stuff and how to, how to translate. And they were just bickering with each other. And it, it was a very lighthearted, enjoyable time. So, Powell is doing a really good job at reaching out with people. He does this. One of his burdens is getting single guys in there and single people just to encourage them. Then during the week, he'll bring in families and they're wanting to use the home to, to, to serve the Lord with it. So go to the next one. I think, yeah, they wanted me in one of the pictures. So the other picture was better. But you can just see. This is what their home is like, and it is it's just a really, it's a beautiful place. So I was very happy for them um, to be able to have that. Okay, we're going to, I think that's the last picture. One of the things we have um, as a church, and I'll just throw this out to you. All of us have an invitation from Howell. He wants us as a church to come down there and to be able to minister down there. And I asked him, how is it that us, how can we come down and really be a part of doing anything when there's such a language barrier? Most people here don't speak the language. And I really, I, I was challenged by some of the things he told me, but I wanna throw this open to you for a moment. Um, we've got difficulties on why we sh and, and reasons why we should not go down. So my question is, why should we go down? What's a what's what's one reason? Let's keep them really short because I'm running short on time here. But what is a reason that we should go down and participate? I'm good at the negatives. The reason I should not go, I can't speak the language worth beans. Again, no pun intended. Why should give me one reason we should go? 
So we can be an encouragement to the our missionaries themselves. Yes, <laughs> to encourage Howell and Kristen, to encourage our missionaries. It does encourage them. They, Howell was not so much encouraged because I gave him money. He didn't even know I was giving him money. That was the very last thing I did was leave him money. All I did was take from the guy. 20 pesos, a dollar to go get me this huge thing of groceries. He sacrificed for me. And I appreciated it, but I hope it was an encouragement. Yes, to be an encouragement to them. What else? Yes. Okay, help us un understand our community. That came up a few times, by the way. That's a good thing to bring up. I told them I need somebody like that here, but I hesitate bringing somebody up. One of, they have a misconception down there. I think I shared that some this morning, but they have this conception that everybody up here is like the missionaries that go down. And I had to, you know, put a few people straight. That is not America anymore. This is not what we're like. Uh, Obed was thinking that America, you can just go get a job anywhere and there's churches. There's just good churches you can go to. There's, they're all over the place. And I had to tell them that is not the case. It is, there are some, he knows people who came from Greenville, where there are multiple good churches in one locale. He knows people that have come from these areas where there may be some good ones. And, and what they're hearing is, well, you can go up there and get jobs making $250 an hour. And he's hearing from people in San Francisco who are working union jobs and paying $6,000 a month for rent. And he's, they're, they're not getting a good picture of what it's like up here. And so it's a, they need to, it, it was, it was profitable to be able to work with them. That's a good point. What else? What's another reason that we should go down? They also do the concert with other parts of Mexico. They do. Uh, and they see someone coming and serving despite the language barrier and encourage them to do more. You're doing you're doing that and I can speak to these kids. I can why am I not being more excited about the ministry that I have here? And then they want to serve more in their church as well as go on mission trips to other parts of Mexico. That's yeah, good. Saw that happened when when I came to help in the children's day activities. And uh, the following that was on Saturday, the following day on Sunday, that was the other church, but he Everyone there was giving different testimonies at, at my church. And one of the ladies stood up and was mentioning about how much of an encouragement it was having him there and seeing his excitement about working with the kids, even though he couldn't uh, communicate fully with them. And that encouraged me. To know that, you know, okay, it made somewhat of a difference. And it, it, it's exciting. I want to encourage us to seriously consider this. One of the things that I did not do, and I wish I had, um, as our kids were younger, we didn't do a lot of vacations, period. Uh, things were just tight. And there was it was very difficult to do a vacation. But looking back, and not just and not just those kids, any of us. When you start thinking of taking some time off and possibly going somewhere to do a vacation, consider how much more profitable, how much more of a bang for your buck, so to speak, you could get by saying, okay, rather than going to the lake, to the mountains, let's go to Monterey. Let's expose ourselves to a ministry 
let's expose ourselves to what God is doing in other places. And let's let ourselves be used. That is a bad, that would be an awesome vacation. I was asking, oh, well, what could we do if we came down? And, and that's something he's mulling over. He could, it could be helping with kids programs. They have a group coming down right now. It's just, uh, it's a medical group, giving out wheelchairs, giving out things free. Where they come in, they have a doctor look at you, but while you're waiting in the waiting room, they're giving the gospel. And you can be a part of this. So the invitation is there for us as a church, as many as want to go down to go. And I was excited by that. So that was a, a good thing for us to consider. I didn't see much. They all want to move up here. Let me just say this. I don't know of any Americans in our area. No one in our area would want to live in this area. They wouldn't want to live here. This, is, this was a dirty place. And if you have a car, just get ready for it to die really quick. Uh, it will be broken or stolen. But it's it's got its issue. It's, this is not where they're wanting to go. If you went here, it's because you're going to minister. And that would be a good thing. So I would encourage us. That if you like living in the state, the sun Pedro, you Pricey, um, maybe back uh, to much mass prices in the state. The streets, everything looks like it's in the state, but it's a completely different world. Are better. They don't have. There's no. You do not have wood homes. Wood just does not exist to make homes. Everything is concrete cement houses so you don't change things you need to add something you got to chisel out to get to the pipe system it's not what i'm used to and it's not what most americans are going to be able to say i like this uh no very little uh they had it they have some in their rooms people have some but it's, it's just expensive thing services are cheap you can go to a mechanic you can go to a people will go down there to get why to get their dental work done and save money because services are cheap but they're good but stuff is expensive so the air conditioner way high you just people can't afford it and um, that's where they're at so i hope this helps you to be able to pray for hoel to be able to pray for people in the church you see the problems they're going through and the goal is that we get more of a burden to pray for them. Okay. One of the pastors is like Rebecca Smith, and there's and there's a way after who who's going to have surgery. He's he has a very rare some type of deformity that they are. I don't remember the details, but he needs to have a surgery down in Mexico City, and it's a not an easy one, but it's a very expensive one. They're having to pay a lot to go down and stay and have him fixed. So Do you have a picture in there of Ernesto and his wife, the, the couple that's helping them? No, I didn't get one of Ernesto. I did not. Is he, is he a young guy? Yes. Okay. Yes, they have uh, his, their little boy is about five, a uh, young couple and uh, doing a good work. He's a web developer, so he does that for income. And think about this. He has purposefully moved to this church to minister and he's just keep, he's, he's doing an outside job, paying all of his bills and diving into this ministry to help it out. Uh, I think the goal is Wean off web developing, wean into pastoring this church with Hoel. And that's what that's what their, their desire is. So you know, um, Hoel and Kristen are currently at around um, 
you know, let's go ahead and end the recording. Uh, we can leave the, the thing on, but uh, just end the recording part.